Hello, I'm Ron Clark. Today, <clears throat> I want to talk about the Catholic brilliance. What is it? Where does it come from? Etc. Now, I realize that I speak about it a lot, and I have sort of written a little bit about where it comes from. But I've always been sort of afraid <laughs> to uh, actually attempt to put it into words because it's very, very, very difficult to describe. Because in order to understand what it is, what causes it, we have to talk about the supernal realm, the I. Um, and none of our language, our way of thinking, uh, really corresponds to the supernal realm. It is infinite. There is no time. There is no space. But the main thing is there is no sequence. Things don't happen as a consequence of other things happening. Everything just is, okay? But in order to wrap our brains around it, I have to resort to uh, speaking in terms of sequence. You know, uh, our language is rooted in sequence. There's just no way to describe things without using sequential words. Okay. So, to understand the Catherine brilliance, we have to start with the I, with Kether, the one self, the unity of all being, all existence, is the I, that awareness of I-ness that we all have. See, that's the thing, it's Kether, it's in everything. It's identifiably in everything. And everything that exists has this sense of I. Okay, so we rise up to Kether, rise up to the I. And that is the quintessential experience of I-ness, of I, of Kether. Now, <clears throat> Each sephirot, if you will, kether, has three distinct phases, or um, faces, um, in the Kabbalistic uh, imagery. They speak of the faces of, of God, the, the faces of kether. Um, the first primary face or phase is that sense of I. There's nothing happening here. It's just being. It's just I. There is no awareness of anything else because this is all that exists is right here, the I. It is one unified Thing without division. So that's the first phase, let's call it. The second phase, and remember, there is no actual sequence here, but bear with me. The second phase is the phase that looks outside of itself. And this outside is what the Kabbalists call the Ain Self R, the limitless light. That's the common translation, the limitless light. It's not light. <clears throat> to say it's limitless uh, uses words that, <clears throat> that imply existence, but all of existence is within the eye. So this other realm out here is something totally different something totally different than i 
we can't, as human beings, conceive of this at all. There's no way, we don't have any words that can describe it, any words that don't apply that it exists, but it doesn't exist. But there it is, beyond the eye. So this is the other phase, second phase, is the outward looking phase. Okay. As, as the eye recognizes the Ain Sof as something totally different, in that recognition is uh, the reality that I is something. The I has characteristics. The I is unique. The I has meaning, and that is the third phase, is looking into the self of the, uh, looking into itself, I recognizing that it is something unique, and it has features, it has meaning. So we go from I to I am. <laughs> And what I am has meaning, and that is chokmah, a central meaning. That is the essential meaning of what it, what it means to be I. And I sees that, I defines that, I experiences that. That is where the Catholic brilliance first forms that uh, creative because it is the I realizing that it is all this all these things are the I all this meaning is within I that is a creative movement of I awareness of the I awareness seeing, becoming aware of itself. That is the Catholic brilliance. Within the Catholic brilliance is all of that essential meaning that is chokmah, wisdom. <clears throat> so, the Catholic brilliance is the awareness of the eye turning and looking within itself and creating, if you will, the essential meanings. That is where the Catholic brilliance forms. It's not from Cather, it's because of Cather that the brilliance forms. Now, the Catholic brilliance fills Hakma and uh, adheres to essential meaning. In Hakma, <clears throat> in Hakma itself, their essential meaning just exists. It's undifferentiated. It's not. Uh, given sequence. This is still a, the supernal realm, Hakma. It also has no sequence. <clears throat> but, so, <clears throat> the Catholic brilliance surrounds, sticks to uh, essential meanings, and then it passes over to Bina. <clears throat> essential form. The eye, when it begins to look down, it looks down and sees itself, but it sees that I am that. <laughs> I am that. I have a specific shape and form 
that I am. I am, and this is where the Catholic brilliance forms and surrounds the essential meaning which says, I am that. I have that form. It's automatic. And again, it's non-sequential. So in Bina, the bright, fertile mother is filled with the Catholic brilliance that surround the essential meanings that take form in Bina but it's not distinct, individualized forms. It's the potential for all those multitude of forms that we know. But here, this is a fernal realm. It's non-sequential. It hasn't taken particulate form yet. So that uh, Catholic brilliance surrounds essential meaning and fills form. And then, when we come to Tiferet, from Bina, Bina is a bright, fertile mother. She gives birth to all that myriad of forms, that infinite number of individual selves. I am that I am. 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 Do you get what I'm trying to say here? <clears throat> I am that I am expresses the sequence of the non-sequential. <clears throat> it puts it in a context that we can understand and comprehend. So, this is where the Catholic brilliance comes from. It comes, it is the movement of the awareness of the I. As it moves through itself, it carries with it the Catholic brilliance. And all of existence, the whole temporal, sequential, astral, physical, and mental realms, all the sequential bits of that is the I, is a movement of the I awareness taking these different forms, you know, and it, it, it is the, the I experiencing the fullness of itself. And it does that through the Catholic brilliance. <clears throat> everything, everything is Catholic brilliance, ultimately. <clears throat> Though it certainly doesn't look like our conception of the Catholic brilliance. And this is just how we conceive of the Catholic brilliance. We conceive of it in a sort of archetypal essence, and that's the Catholic brilliance that we deal with uh, magically, the archetypal Catholic brilliance. But, at the same time, everything is Catholic brilliance. Okay. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> we can generate the Catholic brilliance. First, though, uh, in learning how to generate the Catholic brilliance, the first step in that is generating what I call the Adonai light, this rainbow-hued light that human beings can generate, that we do generate, when we consciously make that connection to the eye and you know while we are in our physical body so if we can connect our awareness to that eye awareness while we are here 
fully conscious as, you know, normal uh, physio astromental human beings, we generate that Adonai light, a swirling light that has all the colors of the rainbow inside of it. For me, it's little particulate bits of color, and all, all color is in the Adonai light. And that's the light that human beings generate when we are connected with the I in the temporal present moment. Okay? Now, generating the Catherine brilliance is a bit different. It's the same, the same pattern, but instead of just having a connection, we make that connection with the I and we bring the I down into the temporal present moment. So the eye is here, looking through your eyes consciously. That is when the Catholic brilliance erupts around us in unlimited quantities. And we can use that very much the same way that we use the Adonai light, or the same way we use the vital energy, or the elements, or the fluids, any the colored lights, any substance that we are manipulating, you know, directing, you know, impregnating with our will, all of that, the Catholic brilliance uh, is for that. But it is, uh, of all the substances we use magically, it is this superior um, uh, substance, in, in, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> um, this explains why the, the tool I make, the radiator works, okay? What I do with a radiator is I have present all, all ten of the Sephirot focused on a central sphere that is once tuned to the Catholic brilliance, um, it sets up this dynamic where the Cather, the eye, is present in the temporal present moment along with all of the other Sephirot through tuning of those crystals um, and focused on the Catholic brilliance and it spontaneously generates the Catholic brilliance because there is that connection, that factual connection where the cather is in the temporal present moment. Um, so it will just naturally radiate the Catholic brilliance. Learning to generate the Catholic brilliance, um, I uh, have two separate pathways to that in, in, well, actually three separate pathways to that in my various writings. Um, first is... Uh, TMO, the magic of yod heh vav -He adonai That uh, is all about generating the Adonai light, making that connection between the Cather uh, and the uh, temporal present moment, um, generating the Adonai light. And there is uh, a method in the later writings on TMO um, about how to take that to generating the Catholic brilliance. And it is just a step above that, you know, just bringing that Cather down all the way. Um, I also give a pathway through my self-healing Archaeus, which is a much more hermetic instead of a Kabbalistic pathway. Um, and that is, uh, you know, Ba predicated on 
the uh, recognition and experience of the four different bodies uh, that one partakes in, shall we say. So the physical, astral, mental, and then the eternal mental body, which encompasses the I, and bringing that awareness down into the physical temporal moment. And in a more, more recent book of Aries, I give uh, basically a, a, a hybrid of the two methods. Um, just direct, you know, because really it is very straightforward. It's just about bringing the eye awareness, not just that connection with the eye, but the eye itself down into the temporal present moment. And you generate the cathode brilliance. <clears throat> and like I said, it's manipulable. So, I hope that was comprehensible in some way. Um, <clears throat> yeah, just, just remember when you're thinking about it, that the sequence that's inherent in what I described, it, it, it's not real. Um, it's all occurring at once. <clears throat> Just all at once. <clears throat> That's it. <laughs> Till next time. Bye-bye.